Hey, New Home family, I'm Brother Jay Maydeen, and welcome to worship. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss this experience from God on today. So look, get your phone, get your iPad, get near your nearest device, I mean your TV, whatever it is. Make sure you call your family, your friends, tell them they're not going to want to miss this word from God on today. Join us in worship by sitting there liking, sharing, doing whatever. Whatever makes you happy while you're in worship, you do it. Bishop R.C. Blakes is going to give you an amazing word at the end of worship, and I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss it. So let's go into worship. Come on, let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being all that we need, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on with our hands lifted all over the sanctuary. All it takes is a memory just to remember who he is and what he's done. Hallelujah. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. to say you Lord Lord, oh, say here is my, yeah. my worship. 
my worship. Come on, let me hear your new home. All of my worship. Seriously. All of my. See, all of my. With the fruit of our lips, we worship you. See, all of my. Come on, everybody, right here. See, here's my. Here's my worship. See, all of my. All of my worship. We see. To you, Jesus. We have a worship offering to give. Receive all of my worship. Hallelujah. Can we continue to bless his name? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is your pastor, R.C. Blakes Jr., and I'm coming to you today from the beautiful land of Anguilla, a little island out in the middle of, I think, the Atlantic Ocean. Needed some time to get away, to regenerate, refresh, and get uh, prepared to finish this year strong. I don't know if you've uh, been paying attention or not, but this year is running away from us. We're moving into the latter days of the first quarter of this year. My prayer is that you're not wasting time. If you hear the ocean in the background, that's because the ocean is in the back. <laughs> the ocean is in the background. But I wanted to talk to you today, my family, uh, in particularly my cyber family, those of you that are connected to New Home Ministries, but maybe you're not in the physical locations, but you are as much a part of the family as anybody. And as well as those of you who are a part of the physical locations, but uh, you, you wake up in the mornings and you glean from this word as well. I want to talk about what to do when you know you're wrong. And the first question I want to ask is, do I have anybody, do I have anybody that's ever been wrong and you knew you were wrong? By whatever means, maybe you were like David and the prophet Nathan came to you and said, you're wrong. Or maybe God came to you and God said, you're wrong. Or maybe circumstances just fell down on you and you woke up and you realized that you were wrong. Have you ever been wrong? Have you ever been wrong and knew that you were wrong? The question is, what do we do? Because so many people today, especially, are wrong and clearly just don't know how to handle it, don't know what to do. I was watching, which was really a blessing for me, those of you that are in tune at all. Some of you may not know what I'm talking about, but here in the United States of America, we have an ex-football player who's now a very famous podcaster by the name of Shannon Sharp. He and one of our... Um, more famous comedians uh, got into an online beef argument. Long story short, both of them are too old to be arguing and fussing and talking about fighting. And uh, they, they made amends with the conversation, which was great to see. And Shannon Sharp, the famous ex-football player and now podcaster, said he was wrong for the way he handled it. And I listened to that and I said, wow, thank God that I've 
gotten a chance to see how grown men would handle things back in a day that is long since passed. When you're wrong, you got to know how to handle it. Now, if you go to Psalm number 51, verses uh, 1 through 4, here David is wrong. And I encourage you to look into the backstory of this text that I'm getting ready to read for you. Look into the context, the full context of it. But David here knows that he was wrong. And listen to how David responds to the awareness that, that he was wrong. Listen to how he, he says in Psalms 51, 1 through 4, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So David here is aware that he was wrong. And notice something. David didn't try to lie his way out of it. David didn't try to cover it up. David didn't try to, um, you know, uh, make believe or, or, or pretend that he didn't know what was. David acknowledged, David admitted that he had sinned and that his sin was in the eyes of God. He knew how to handle the situation when he knew he was wrong. How many folk have gone down with the ship because they just did not handle those moments when they were caught with their hands in the cookie jar? You know, when, when, when your wife find out all of this stuff about you, it ain't nothing for you to do but just go on and, and admit that you were wrong and apologize and pray that she gives you another chance. We can't have video evidence of you. Got you all on the tape recorder. Got pictures of you jumping out the third story hotel window uh, in, in nothing but your fruit of the looms and you talking about it wasn't me. Come on, man. The first thing we got to do, and I kind of alluded, <laughs> I've kind of alluded to it already. Number one, you got to acknowledge the mistake. Number one, you have to acknowledge the error. Recognizing and admitting to oneself and to others that a mistake has been made is the crucial first step towards recovery. Refusing to acknowledge errors can lead to a cycle of denial and missed opportunities, missed opportunities for growth. I remember so vividly, man, and you all have heard me share this story before. I was a, um, I was a young man, uh, probably a young adolescent. I had to be around 12, I don't know, maybe 13, I don't know. And my father traveled a lot. And one day he was in Detroit, Michigan. I never will forget it. And he called back. We didn't have cell phones in those days. He would call on the house phone. He called back to the house and he talked with my mom for a minute. And so then he says to mom, put Bob on the phone. Wow. I'm, I'm you know, giddy about talking to my dad. You know, he's going to probably bring me something back from Detroit, you know. And he says, boy, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great, Dad. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He says, you know, the Lord was talking to me. And the Lord told me that you have been stealing my money, son. Boy, I struck quiet because God knows I had been sliding in that room. He used to carry a lot of cash. And I would slide in that room and peel off a couple of 20s here, a couple of 10s there. 
and I would do it rather frequently. And so when he said to me, the Lord said, you've been stealing my money. I, I, I was frozen because I was in awe. And it was nobody but the Holy Spirit that gave me the right answer to that question in that moment. And my response to him was, who am I to call the Lord a lie? And when I responded like, <laughs> when I responded like that, he started laughing. And he said, boy, don't you take my money no more. Do you hear what I'm saying? I said, yes, sir. I'll never do it again. But if I did not respond that way, if I had, you know, I, I would never do nothing like that. I ain't never did nothing. You know what was going to happen? I was going to have to meet that big black six foot man when he returned from his trip. But because I responded to my error the wrong, the right way, I got a merciful, come on somebody. You got to acknowledge the mistake. You cannot be in wrongdoing and lying at the same time. You're compounding the matter. The Bible says, puts it this way in Proverbs 28 13, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Now there are a few things I want to just give you under this point before we move on. Letter A, admitting you're wrong is not a sign of weakness but of strength and integrity. When you can say, I was wrong, I missed it, that is a sign of strength and integrity. Letter B, internalize the mistake, the error, internalize it to understand the root cause and learn from it. Why did I do this? Why did I make this blunder? Why did I make this mistake? Sit with it for a little while. Internalize it until you can find the root cause of why you did it. Even ask Holy Spirit to reveal your heart to you. Letter C, be prompt in your acknowledgement to prevent the issue from escalating. Don't know you're wrong. And, and just, you know, sweep it under the rug and just ponder it and ponder it. Because if you don't bring it to the surface and it, it comes to the surface by some other means, it's probably going to be 10 times worse than if you had just simply said, okay, this is a mistake I made. But the bottom line is you must acknowledge it. You must acknowledge it the mistake you've made. I've made a million mistakes, right? I've made a million mistakes. I mean, figuratively, I, I guess I could say literally. I've made a lot of mistakes, in other words. And too often, I did not acknowledge it in time. And when it came to the surface, it turned into something that was altogether different, even worse than the original sin. Now, number two, communicate and apologize. When, when you know that you've been wrong and you've done wrong by uh, someone or some others, communicate and apologize. Once, once you've accepted your mistake, once you've accepted your error, the next step is to communicate this to any affected parties. Your approach can significantly impact the outcome and the relationships at hand. You got to learn to communicate and apologize. 
you know why I, I remember uh, when when Holy Spirit brought me when I came to terms with um, the era of my ways as a young man as a young man many many years ago uh, womanizing and sleeping with so many different women when Holy Spirit cleaned my life up I I acknowledged I started talking about my life and how I had lived it I acknowledged my transgressions publicly and at certain points I apologized some people I tried to apologize to in person very few of them actually received it which I understand what a man has done you know so much dirt is hard for a woman to sit there and listen to him talk about he's sorry and he's a changed man don't nobody want to hear all that <laughs> but I did my part I did the best I could do to communicate my heart and to apologize the Bible says in James 5 16 therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed there's a healing that happens in your soul when you can acknowledge your wrongdoing when you can say it out of your mouth when when you don't need others when you don't need others and you don't leave it to others to speak your truth their way but you can speak it for yourself there's a powerful healing that happens in your soul and even in the soul of the person that you or persons you offended you know you'd be amazed there are many of you that are parents who um, maybe you just didn't do a good job maybe you weren't there maybe you didn't show up like you were supposed to and so now here it is your children or your child is older and you have at least uh, an open door to your child's ear and you've never confessed to what you did wrong you've never said you know I missed it as a parent I was young I didn't know it was never that I didn't love you I just didn't I just didn't know and 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 you just going around like you know all is forgotten it may be forgiven but it's not forgotten and your child your children you don't imagine the healing that will take place in them just to hear you say I appreciate you you for loving me and accepting me into your life at this stage but when you were younger I missed it and I just need you to know it was never that I didn't love you it was just that I was ignorant I was young I didn't know how to be a parent whatever the case may be but there's a healing that happens when you communicate and apologize a few things I'll say to you under this point letter a be honest and transparent with those affected by your mistake be honest and transparent don't try to put lipstick on a pig okay, how much lipstick you put on a pig is not a prom date it's a pig with lipstick on it don't try to dress it up don't try to smooth it over letter B offer a sincere apology without making excuses for the error I'm sorry I missed it you know none of this well you know if you had just if you had communicated to me a little more I wouldn't have made that mistake and you know I wasn't there for you but you know when you was a child you act like you didn't love me you didn't want me so no 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 you you are missing it you're missing it you you have to learn to apologize sincerely without any excuses I missed it period it affected you negatively it was my fault period Jose Marti says an apology is a good way to have the last word everybody wants to have the last word will have the last word by apologizing have the last word by apologizing and then let her see be open to discussing ways to rectify the situation and to prevent it from happening in the future 
Easy as that. Easy as that. Be open to discussing ways to rectify the situation and prevent it from happening in the future. That means you can't be in your feelings. You can't be sensitive. That means you have to allow the offended, affected party to speak their mind. If they say, well, you, you know, you could do this better, that you don't need to be defensive. You got to listen intently and you got to receive what they have to say to you because you're the one that is the offending party. Right? Now, number three, and finally, make amends and move forward. You know, where you can... Um, where you can make amends, where you can repay a person if at all possible, do that. Do that. And once you've made amends, move forward. Don't, don't, stay, don't stay handcuffed to a negative point in your past and don't let anybody keep you handcuffed, you know? Like a lot of times in, in relationships, a, a person will say, well, I forgive you for cheating. I want to work on it. But then, you know, they keep you in prison for the next 10 years to, you know, you remember when you did X, Y, Z, you owe me. Well, if that's what you're talking about in terms of moving forward, you can have it. I was wrong. I made a mistake. And I think it's best I just move on because what you're talking about is not going to work. I'm not going to allow you to make me a prisoner to a mistake I made in the past. I'm going to make amends, but I'm going to move forward. I'm going to make amends, but I'm going to move forward. If you're not prepared to forgive me, I'm not asking you to forget it. I'm not saying we're not going to address it again, but I am saying you're not going to hold this over my head, you know, for, for the rest of my life or the rest of our life together. After apologizing, it's important to take action to remedy the situation and ensure it doesn't happen again. This shows your commitment to improving and maintaining trust with others. <sighs> you know, I've made a mistake. I've made mistakes at times as a pastor when I was younger. Hot-headed, trying to prove I got the, you know, I'm in authority and all of that. And so there, there, had been, there have been times when I would just say things to people that were unnecessary. And I would hurt people's feelings. Sometimes I would say things publicly over the mic. Sometimes I would say things in private. And people, people's feelings would get hurt. And uh, those that have been with me for a long, long time, it's, it's been a while since I've had to do this, many years. But there were times in the past when I, I realized that I had handled people or certain people the wrong way. And I would, I would literally get on the microphone. Sometimes it was a, a private matter. It wasn't public. Sometimes it was public, but most of the time I would apologize publicly because apologizing was my way of apologizing publicly was my way of making amends. You know, and, and, and a lot of times I apologized publicly because sometimes the things we do to hurt people privately, they don't share them with us but they'll share them inside of a community. And so sometimes it's more than the individual that's affected by something you did wrong. Sometimes it's their friend that they shared it with in confidence. And sometimes others need to see or hear you apologize to make amends because indirectly they are offended by you as well. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14 says, For if you forgive other people, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. When you learn to make amends and you learn to say to others, I apologize, not only will they forgive you when you're wrong, but your heavenly Father will forgive you as well. What do you need to do to make amends? You know, if if, if you're guilty of gossiping about somebody in a church community or in a workplace setting and you've gone around and you've talked about this person, 
well you probably need to make a public declaration you probably need to share in that community I have said some things about so-and-so to many of you all and I want you to know I was wrong I've had people to do that come and get the microphone and say pastor I have been talking about you uh, in this church and and I'm grieved by it I want you to forgive me and I want to say to the church please forgive me anybody that I've said anything and and you know all all was forgiven I don't carry I don't hold a fence in my heart that's one beautiful thing that the Lord has given me I don't hold a fence in my heart but they were doing what making amends few things I'll say to you on this point letter a implement the necessary changes to correct the mistake don't just be sorry repent turn around go in a different direction letter B learn from the experience and adjust your behavior or systems to avoid repetition of the same error don't keep making the same mistake over and over again Henry Ford said the only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing and then let us see use this as an opportunity for personal growth and continue to move forward with a positive mindset so what do you do when you know you were wrong what do you do when you know you were wrong I pray that you've gotten something out of this today now my prayer is that the Spirit of God will take you and bring you higher in the Word and in life today as as you prepare as we prepare to honor the Lord tithe with the, and with the seed I want you to get the Lord's tithe prepared now and I'm asking every person that is willing and able to sow a $56 seed into New Home Church into New Home Ministries do that now the the giving information is either on the screen or you can look in the description and you'll find the links for giving to New Home Ministries I want you to sow into the ministry now get the tithe return the Lord's tithe now in Jesus name now listen don't forget to worship with us today in uh, any of our physical locations Jackson Mississippi Houston Texas New Orleans Louisiana Hammond Louisiana Baton Rouge Louisiana meet us at one of our physical locations and just know that Lisa and I love you we are always praying for you also don't forget this coming Saturday at our um, main location in New Orleans at our 1616 RC Blake senior drive location I am conducting the father-daughter talk for teens I'm asking parents to bring your young girls I'm gonna sit them down from one to three and I'm going to share with them everything a father should have taught a daughter about life womanhood and the world I want you to bring your kids this is sponsored by my wife's mentoring program girls of destiny it was amazing in Houston Texas I just need you all to bring the young girls and let me pour into them it's absolutely free you can use the QR code on the screen I want to see the girls this Saturday I think it's February the next Saturday February the 24th I want to see them at the father-daughter talk for teens it's going to be absolutely amazing I love you you're on top you're going high you continue to give we will see you at the top God bless you until next time well family that was a life-changing word from our Bishop Bishop R.C. Blake Jr. I love it that he just teaches us something great that will impact our life I know Bishop has already given you the different ways and means that you can sow into our ministry be a blessing to our church but I want you to know about a way you can be a blessing to our man of God as a matter of fact take out your phone right now and scan that QR code you can sow into his cash app that way or if not you can put in dollar sign Robert Blake's JR you can also sow through his personal website or go to the Givelify app and so to New Home Family Worship Center. Sow a good seed 
into Bishop Blake's life. It is good ground.